All right, we are here at Win Las Vegas, and I'm sitting next to the Sebastian Maniscalco. More sold out shows here at the Encore Theater. I know this is, you've been here so many times. What does it feel like? First of all, is this like your second home at this point? Would you consider it? Well, I, it's funny. Last time I was here, we celebrated doing 50 shows here in, uh, in Las Vegas at the Win, and I was like, man, it's been 50 shows already. So, yeah, it's nice. I live in Los Angeles. It's nice to kind of scoot out here. It's a 45 minute flight. I got two small kids. So for me, very convenient. Plus the hotel kind of really suits my, uh, my style. I mean, I feel like if the Rat Pack were alive today, they'd be hanging out here at the Win. Yes. I mean, it, just the, the studio alone that we're in is, uh, I is, feel is, rich. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> I feel like I know um, how to gamble right now. <laughs> yeah, it just makes you feel wealthy. <laughs> it does. Um, but yeah, it's it's been great. Um, by the way, I don't know if we have any uh, camera on the window. No one watching us right now. Um, <laughs> your husband stopped by, which was very sweet of him. But other than that, we outside have... outside of these studios, it's a clear window, so anyone walking yeah. by can see. And um, you know, oh. we got the buffet crowd kind of lingering around. Is that what you call this? Uh, <laughs> No, it's uh, it's uh, it's nice. Let me get some. I feel like I literally feel like a zoo animal with people just kind of looking in. A little bit. A little bit. Look at this guy. He has no <laughs> idea what this is. Uh, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's it's all right. Got distracted. That's okay. So you're back tonight and the whole weekend for your sold out shows at the Encore Theater. Um, that's also where you filmed your special. Is it me? Yeah. Which we have so much to get into quickly. Um, first of all, thank you for even doing this interview because you have shows tonight. I never know with comics or performers if you need space or time or how does that work for you can you just walk right on stage or do you need a minute to gather your thoughts uh well particularly with las vegas it seems to be a a, a hot place for people to want to come see a show so i have my mother here oh. uh with her two friends and uh, my mother is 78 years old and she's behaving like she's in her 20s Stop. so uh she's looking to go to tau tonight and get a table <laughs> Uh, but uh so she's here my my buddies from chicago came to visit yeah i have a friend of mine who came to visit from new york so in las vegas it's really hard to uh kind of just sit in your room and wait for showtime i was just at the pool with my buddies hanging out with them and i'll meet my mother after this oh my gosh and they're going to dinner in between shows so yeah it's, it seems to be a heavy week when it comes to las vegas and people visiting but no i, I don't really have to do much like decompressing or get into a meditative state before I go on stage. I, uh, I just tend to get a little quiet 10, 15 minutes before a show kind of, I listen to all my, um, I, re uh, I audio record all my sets. So I will like review some of the sets that I did at the comedy store this week. Yeah. Cause I'm doing some new stuff. So yeah, it's, there's no seance or incense sticks or anything. <laughs> like that. Oh, you never know. It's nice that you can actually relax those. It, Especially at this hotel, it's I'm pretty, we're we're obsessed with it. Yeah, it's nice. Do you have a favorite place to eat? Here, I like. Uh, actually, went to Cipriani last time uh, we were here. Had some good food there. The steakhouse is great. Um, Delilah, we went there. We're going to, there tonight. Delilah feels in like a secret shows. society. Doesn't it feel like? I don't know. I just walk in. I feel like stuff's happening. There's a, a woman dancing above your head. There's great music great food so we're gonna go there in between shows so i don't know as i'm talking about this i'm going i think i'm gonna be tired <laughs> at it sounds like a lot but at least you're not leaving this is all in one place mm -hmm. that's how i if i if, if, if i ever go to the club a nightclub I, it has to be at the hotel i'm staying at otherwise i am way too tired i don't want to get a cab feet hurt i don't blame you i mean this hotel has kind of everything under one roof. So you stay here, you go to the pool here, you go to dinner here, you go see a show. It's the only uh, place that has a golf course mm. on property, which is unheard of. I You're mean, a golfer. I've become a better golfer. Actually, within the last three weeks, I've been taking lessons. Um, I had sciatic pain ripping down my right leg for about two years, so I couldn't really do any strenuous activity. Not that golf is strenuous, but it was really bad sciatic pain yeah. so that has subsided so yeah i um what makes you want to take lessons do you just for, just for yourself to be a better golfer well it's mainly for the people i play with okay. um 
You want to beat him. Well, not, I, I, I want to, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that's constantly looking for balls in the woods. So I'm taking the lessons so people will ask me to play again. Okay. With them. So it's not for myself. But do you have golfer friends? I do have a group of guys that particularly are into golf. So yeah, it's funny how your life becomes a little segmented when it comes to friendship, especially in your fifties, you got, you know, guys that golf, you guys, guys, guys that ski, or you have guys that want to go out and party. So yeah, uh, I have a few golf friends. Uh, we're picking up a little more of a crowd outside. Oh, if you wow. want to say hello. Packed. <laughs> Packed. Look at this. This is my demographic right here. Nice families have jobs, right? Good for you. Look at how excited nice. they are. They're probably coming to your shows tonight. I doubt it. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about pickleball? I saw you playing. I don't know anything about pickleball, but that's that seems very hard to do. Yeah, it's uh, it's tennis for cardio. people over fifty. Oh. Basically, there's not a lot of movement, um, especially when you play doubles. It's it's like uh, it's like uh, ping pong. Yeah. And uh, I started playing that on the road with my buddy John Petrelli at least four or five years ago. We would go to, say, Cincinnati, Ohio, and we would seek out the pickleball uh, place there. And generally speaking, pickleball is played, with, uh, played by senior citizens. So um, we would walk in and, and play with a group of senior citizens. But they're, they're really good. I yeah. mean, they really, really are good. But yeah, that's my new game. Pickleball is the fastest growing game in America that's right That's what now. I thought. Yeah. yeah. My best friend loves pickleball. She's a, I feel like, is that a real, is it a sport? I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going to get hate mail no, for that. No, you one. know, I call it what you want, but it's fun. It's slightly active. <laughs> and, right up my uh, alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually we went to uh, Mexico for my uh, wife's 40th birthday when we were a group of friends and we had a pickleball tournament. No that's, way. That's where that photo was from. Oh, there. that's fun. Okay, yeah. more people are excited. More people, more yeah. people. Look wow. at them. They're going on. You're going on Instagram going on. right nice. now, Sebastian. It's nice. We could pipe this into the lobby if we want, guys. This is, <laughs> they're missing out on a riveting conversation here. Gold. <laughs> Let's talk about your special, Is It Me? Yes. Which you filmed here at uh, Win Las Vegas at the Encore Theater. And I love the theme of the special. I love the homework you gave the audience. If you wanted to mention that quickly, what if they succeeded in this? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm a fan of like older Vegas, just listening to the stories that my parents used to tell about when they used to come here, they used to dress up, everybody was, it's like a, it was a, a big uh, event mm -hmm. that people used to come to Las Vegas and, and really get dressed up and, and, and do it up. And now, as you see, even me, I'm in shorts in, uh, in Las Vegas, <laughs> which, was, which would be a sin back in the 50s if you caught walking around the casino in, in shorts so anyway i wanted to kind of bring back um some i don't want to say class but just you know hey we're going dress up you know come come to my show in a tuxedo or a suit because i was going to be dressed up and um what had ended up happening was i don't know 20 percent dressed up so that 20 percent, we, we kind of saved some seats in the front and moved them from the back to the front so we could get shots of people that actually took the assignment seriously. Sandals in the balcony. Sandals in the back. A lot of sandals here in Las Vegas. <laughs> actually, a lot of uh, just bare feet. If you uh, if you feel like coming out <laughs> in your bare feet in Las Vegas. Are you excited enough. about the F1? I mean, I'm not an F1 guy, but I am excited about it. I started watching the Netflix special and started getting a, a slight interest in, in, in the, the drivers and, and how they documented all that. So I'm excited that it's coming to Las Vegas. Also, the Super Bowl is coming to Las Vegas. So I think Las Vegas right now is really in a, a great groove when it comes to you know entertainment and a destination for people to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm just excited to be a small part of it here at the Win. Yes, and I know you have more shows next year. You just, it, I lo do you still, when you see sold out on any show of yours, does it still give you a little like, ex what do you feel when you see that? Or are you used to it at this point? Well, I come from a, a very, uh, we never think positive <laughs> in the family I come from. So it's always uh, a high stress moment when you put tickets on sale because the expectation is, at least where I come from, right? are they going to come again to see this or what? But uh, it is very flattering when I see sold out. And uh, I just always want to give the people, and you know, being a, a comedian, 
you always want to give them new material because with the internet now, the way it is, social media, you know, you put out a bit, it's out there. You know, people see it. Back in the 80s, you know, you got to tour with the same act and nobody got you know, nobody, nobody really saw it mm -hmm. so the pressure to come up with material nowadays is, is very very it's a it's, it's a high pressure to, to to but you also want it to be as good if not better than the older material you put out so yeah sold out right now is not a given it's 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 a it's always you know, it's a lot of work to sell yeah. sell tickets i never thought about that especially because you've had how many six hour specials i think yeah six specials so yeah it's it's uh but you know what i'm doing material that follows my life you know i'm, I'm a father i got a six-year-old i'm a four-year-old i'm always in scenarios now that are very different to me i'm going to kid parties and whatnot so my life kind of dictates where my material goes yeah what is it well first i think the ladies would like to say hello if you want to give them a quick wave oh yeah that's my cousin my aunt is it really no oh um <laughs> i'm so gullible <laughs> <laughs> i was all in um where did you meet your wife met my wife at the gym um i had a personal trainer at the time i had asked him you got any good looking women that come here he goes yeah i got one that comes at six o'clock i said well that's kind of early just put me at seven and let me catch her vibe on the way out. So we kind of hit it off. Not kind of hit it off. She had no idea I was even hitting on her. I would come to the gym like fully showered, baby oil, cologne. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. Button down shirt. Yeah, it was like I was going to a nightclub when I was going to the gym at 7 a.m. And I started kind of hitting on her. And she was the sweet as pie, but didn't talk at all. Just very shy. Oh. So I took her out on a date, went for sushi, and uh, didn't, didn't say nothing. Really didn't say much. And I asked the trainer, I go, does, does Lana talk? And he <laughs> goes, ah, I can't shut her up in here. I said, well, she didn't say really a word on our on our date. But eventually opened up, and, and now I... Um, so is she more shy then? Or was she, she nervous? Was. She was nervous, very oh. nervous. Because she knew I was a comedian, I think the connotation is oh is he going to make fun of me or is he going to find something on our date that he would use in his act yeah at least that's what she told me but uh yeah now i don't talk she's <laughs> the rules have reversed basically monopolized the entire <laughs> well i have to say thank you for hitting on her thank you for having the courage a lot of people don't they think about it they don't act on it no they don't, I don't, well, especially today now dating is so different than it was, you know, 15 years ago than when I met Lana. I mean, dating today is there's, I don't know, we used to have to come up with something to say, clever, you know, go up to a girl and, you know, whatever, dance. I don't know. Uh, not, not today. It just seems very, you know, just you're looking at a bunch of pictures on a phone and you're liking and I don't know what happens after that, but I don't know. There's a lot of work Lucky. going out. We used to go to a place called Ac Acapulco Bar. This is in the northwest suburbs of, uh, of of Chicago on Saturday night. And man, it was. We used to practice during the week our dance moves in the sh in the mirror. I used to have it. This is this is sad. I used to have <laughs> a shirt that said Italian boys on the back of the shirt. My buddy had one too. So we used to walk in with Italian boys on the back and used to, and I mean, it, it was so ridiculous, but we thought we were like John Travolta, you know? <laughs> so I don't know if that would work today. <laughs> was that the courting shirt? That's your, the peacock, you know? Yeah. It's like, look at me. I'm an Italian and I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on guys? <laughs> this is uh, another family member. Another cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the swag worked. You have two children. You have young kids, too. Yeah, young kids. Uh, Serafina and Caruso Jack. Yeah. I love their names. Very Thank unique. You. Yes. How old are your children? So Serafina is six. Caruso is four. And uh, Serafina is my, my grandmother's name. That's where she got her oh. name. Caruso means uh, little boy in Sicilian. And it's also a hotel that we stayed at in Italy on our honeymoon, which we absolutely loved. Loved the name. We were looking kind of for a unique name, something that symbolized uh, something that Lana and I kind of shared together. And uh, we wanted to kind of sound Italian, but we didn't want to go with like Anthony or 
any of those typical Italian names that you hear. So Caruso kind of fit. It's actually a surname. It's it's the last name of a lot of people, but we we gave it first name. I like it. Thanks. It's unique. Is it hard to have young children? Uh, you know what's funny, uh, and again, this is kind of paralleling my act, which you know I'm kind of the disciplinarian. My wife is very, I wouldn't say loose, but you know, just very happy-go-lucky, fun, and I'm a little bit more rigid when it comes to you know. I, I guess this, that's kind of the way I grew up was very like structured mm -hmm. and, you know, what are you doing? It'd be like, what are you doing? A lot of, a lot of, out of nowhere, you know, like you'd be sitting there. You Interrogation. Know. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and now it's very, you know, very friendly, I guess. I don't know. A lot of people, a lot of parents want to be like friends with their kids. I love my kids dearly and we have a great time, but when it comes to like setting structure and whatnot, I find myself taking after my father a lot, which I kind of didn't like growing up. You know, like he, he, the, the funny thing about my dad, which he's become a huge part of my act, is a lot of the stuff he tells me is right, right? It's very, it's very poignant. It's, it's, he's, he's right. But the way he says it, it, it like burns <laughs> your, the back of your spine, right? So it's hard for me to like digest it. And then sometimes I find myself kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, at least I am aware of it and I'm trying to like. I was driving on the freeway the other day and I was driving in the exit lane for way too long. And it was like, this is what my mom does. She drives in the exit lane 30 minutes before the exit. We don't need to wait. The, right. It's an hour. But I'm like, ha have I become my mom? I think we all become our parents at some point or the other. Some happens very rapidly. Mm -hmm. I think it's happening extremely rapidly for me. <laughs> um, and it's sad. And uh, But your dad is very much, he's a loving man. Yes, he is. He's, very much a character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's basically how I succeeded in stand-up. Thank God that this man keeps telling me things that I put in my act and then be able to make a living off of it. Uh, and a lot of people are like, where's your mother in the act? You never really talk about your mom. And I don't know. I mean, although there's some things that have been happening recently that I'm like, I think I'm going to start using. Because she's upset that she's not in the act. Oh. You know, I did a whole movie. It's called About My Father. She's like, what about your mother? Where's About My Mother? I go, oh, ma, You know, I, uh, she's like, okay, well, at least throw me in the act. So she's like looking to. That's hilarious. Were they hesitant at first? Like, oh, I don't want to be in your act. And now the roles are reversed where they're like, well, what about me? No, for for me, my parents have always been in my act. I've always talked about my parents, whether it be at the family a Christmas party or a, or a, a picnic or whatever it might be. My family's always been the kind of the brunt of the joke, and me too. I mean, I got a type of family where we're always making fun of one another or what have you. So, yeah, I don't think it was a shock to them that they were kind of mentioned in in some of the material. Do your kids understand what you do yet? Uh yeah, they know I make people laugh. They've been to a few shows early on. I brought them up on stage with me. They were too too young to know what was going on. But now that my daughter's six, she knows, you know, daddy's funny and that's what he does for a living. My my son knows, but he I don't know if he knows the whole kit and caboodle. Like I just left this morning and uh, my daughter was crying because now she's like, dad, like before, it was like, oh, hey, daddy, that my daddy. And they, they don't know. They're yeah. like three, four years old. Like, daddy. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, you're, you're leaving for two days. That means that, you know, we can't snuggle at night because we, you know, I read her a book and we, you know, go over her day at night. And now she's realizing that I'm not going to be there for two nights. So it's hard on me, too. You know, like I'm going through this. How, how much work do you really need? to do like what's really important in your family it, for me it's become my my wife and my kids and I don't want to look back when I'm 75 years old going what the hell was I doing in Idaho <laughs> on a Friday night when my daughter was at her recital like it's killing me I'm gonna miss her recital in November because I'm doing press for a few things in New York and uh it's gonna break her heart and I'm like you know I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm built to work, though. I just come from that family. My father's still working. He's seven, seven years old, and he's still cutting hair. You know, he's going to die doing a dye job. <laughs> so 
I guess I have that same mentality. You don't. So yeah, a lot of comics are like that too, where it's just, you just keep going. Do you ever hit a wall? I did hit a wall last year. I made a kind of conscious effort to like, let me slow down here. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was constantly touring or on the road. Let me pump the brakes and enjoy my life a little bit. Um, so yeah, this last year has been really nice for me. Kind of, you know, different chapter of my life uh, and, and really enjoying kind of the fruits of my labor. However, you know, work is kind of what feeds my soul yeah. too. So it's nice to kind of come out and, you know, I don't know if you feel like this as a comedian, but like your thoughts that you're gathering on a day-to-day -day basis, you almost have to throw them up to a group of strangers. It's very therapeutic. It feels like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not that crazy that I'm thinking this way. I'm yeah. getting validated for my thoughts through laughter. So I need to perform. So I perform, you know, every, every, every week at the comedy store, just working stuff out. So, yeah, that's good. And, and then you need that space too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's a good balance. You know, it's good to go. It's good that I'm here this weekend, you know, uh, gives my wife an opportunity not to be with me, not to be with her. Right. Sometimes when daddy's around the house, it's a, uh, it's a little laxed and it's, it's hey, daddy's yeah. gone. Let's have a, a gallon of ice cream. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. We are here at uh, Blue Wire Studios at Wynn Las Vegas with Sebastian Maniscalco. Sold out shows here at the Encore Theater. This um, this whole, th and the theater is beautiful too. And I love what you did with your special with the gold and the suit. It looked so nice. Thank you. Thank um, you. We do have the holidays coming up because it's October as we film this right now. Uh, I work for Coast 103.5. We're very big on holidays. We love our Christmas music. We play it early. Are you guys a, a holiday household? Do you get excited? Halloween coming up? Christmas? So, yeah. Uh, when you have kids, you automatically become involved in the holidays, regardless if you like holidays or not. I've always loved the holiday season. Not particularly Halloween. It's not really my my vibe. But now that my kids are... And I, and I never thought I'd be doing this, but we're doing like family outfits, like oh no, family themed outfits, like last and taking year. pictures, like a card. No, no. Oh, for guys, Halloween, don't even saying. don't even give me oh. uh, my my wife ideas. I'm gonna send out a Halloween card <laughs> with us in outfits. No, like last year I was a baby, right? They made me the baby. My wife was the mother, and the the kids were dolls. Okay. And my wife is nuts. She, we had a full crib that I was in, and they were pushing me down the street for trick or treat. Right now, but we didn't plan that the street that we were going to be going down was going to be uphill and downhill. So who ended up pushing the damn thing was was me. Um, but yeah, this year I think we have a rodent problem in the backyard. A lot of raccoons, skunks, possums, and then we had a hire a rodent guy to come out and like trap these animals and then take them somewhere else and drop them off. No, they don't kill them. They just relocate. Mm -hmm. It's a relocation thing. So I think this year I'm going to be the rodent, uh, the exterminator oh. and they're going to be the raccoon possum and, and whatnot. Can't wait. Hey. <laughs> he says, as he looks away, cannot <laughs> wait. It's going to be great. What about Christmas? Christmas, I love Christmas. Um, even though my wife's Jewish, we you know we celebrate both um, Hanukkah and which the kids love Hanukkah and Christmas. And um, yeah, I mean it's, it really turns you into a kid again. Here I am decorating the tree, putting the ornaments up that my mother gave. My father was um, big on giving us ornaments as kids. Every year we got an ornament that signified what you were doing at that point in your life. So one year I had a great year in soccer. I got a soccer guy. And next year I took up uh, a liking and cooking. I got a chef. So now to be putting these ornaments up mm. with our kids, it's like, it's, it's dynamite. So we really love the holidays. New Year's Eve, I'm not big, really big on New Year's Eve. I always used to work New Year's Eve. I used to wait tables. That used to be a huge night for waiting tables, New Year's Eve. And then it turned into comedy on new year's eve and then i i don't know about 12 years ago i said just, i don't want to work on new year's eve i just want to i don't even think i made it to midnight in the last five six years that's how bad new that's year's eve. where i'm at yeah it's a it's a chore and you have to ask yourself can i make it can i make it tonight on my own couch <laughs> it's sad it is sad it's so sad but i still it's i'd rather be there i don't want to be in all the craziness i don't have the energy i don't either 
I don't either. So we uh, we're, we're in bed by nine thirty and uh, <laughs> up, nice up quiet six. night. Yeah. Really quick, you posted a cute video with your mom uh, at the Genius Bar the other day, and I was like, first of all, did, did can you go out into public and people do they recognize you? Like, nobody. well, <laughs> I'm just there's nobody here. Um, do they recognize me? Yes, they recognize me. It's particularly at at a hotel like this where I'm performing. And people are staying at the hotel. It's a little bit more than if I just were to go to Genius Bar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, every, every once in a while, hey, can I take a photo? No problem. But I mean, it's not like you know, I have no security. I walk yeah. around by myself. It's not. It's I not just fun. thought it was so cute. It was such a, a cute bonding. My parents don't have iPhones. They don't have. They barely text. Did so you? Man, does your mom have an iPhone? Do you? She have has an iPhone. <laughs> and I was there to pick up a Apple Watch for my my wife. So. My mother was with me. Also, I was shopping for my wife's 40th birthday, and I needed my mom there for uh, give her advice and what I was looking at some jewelry to get her. So my mom and I just went out shopping, and it was funny. We haven't done that in a while, and you know, my mother and I just we have a ball, and it just it's constantly laughing with my mom and sister and father, my wife. It's just like a you know, just good to be laughing. Yeah, there's stresses in life, but you know, when you get around the ones you love it's it's nothing better than laughing it really is that simple to yeah have that moment you're like this is all i need that's it it's all you need is family to really make you happy and some people take it for granted sometimes i hear no i don't talk to my dad i don't talk to him in 10 years you know you hear those stories i'm like geez how could you not talk to your father what happened that that relationship went south but i don't know for me and my immediate family my mother father sister and and now with my kids and wife her family that's all i need yeah and you also have a sandwich named after you and i thought that was really neat i had no idea that a sandwich was named after me in chicago uh, uh gail king i apparently discovered that there was a sandwich in chicago named after me which was very flattering and quite good it was really oh that's neat sandwich, yeah. i mean it's one of those things like, as you look at your accomplishments it's something you didn't expect to put on the list but here yeah. it is it's my biggest accomplishment yet <laughs> that's right <laughs> Final question. We're here at Blue Wire Studios at Wynn, Las Vegas. Uh, you're at Encore Theater all weekend. And I know you've added a whole bunch of dates to 2024 as well. So very excited about those. Those shows are going to be sold out. Well, I won't say it, but maybe. Most likely. Could be. Probably. Maybe. When you think about when you started compared to right now in this moment, did did everything happen the way you thought it would? I'd be lying to you if I didn't think that I was going to make it. Because if you go in not thinking that, it's that's half of the battle, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was going to blow up to this. You know, like I never got into this to do arenas or movies or or whatnot. I simply got into stand up comedy because I really, really enjoyed making people laugh. My whole life uh, in school, book reports. I was never the class clown, but I always enjoyed getting up in front of a group of people and making them laugh somehow. Uh, so when I went out to Los Angeles in 1998, I told myself, that's all I want to do is make a living doing stand up. That's all I want to do. I just want to pay my bills. And if I could do this the rest of my life, I'd be happy. Uh, it's funny. I, I, I was just across the street at the start. It's just, this was 2000. <laughs> Two, I was opening up for Andrew Dice Clay at the time, and it was called the Wayne Newton Ballroom. It's uh, where Wayne Newton performed, and then Dice would do the Late Show. I would open up for him. This building started construction, I believe, in I think it was October of '02, and I was always a huge fan of Steve Wynn from the Bellagio. And then he's opening up this hotel. I'm like, oh my god! And I was looking at it being constructed. I'm like, man, it would be great to perform at that hotel one day really you know like it was really exciting but when it opened up i think garth brooks was here and they weren't doing stand up here at all i remember i called my agent i go is, is win doing anything because i remember palms was doing some comedy and then there was a comedy club at the tropicana um but i was waiting for win to get on board with stand up and i think about five or six years ago they started booking stand up here and i was like wow and now I'm here at the Blue Wire Studios doing, you know, four sold out shows. So to answer your question, no, I didn't think it was going to be quite this extensive, but um, I I'm never really take it for granted. I, I'm just always really uh, grateful that people come and see me and they enjoy what I do and uh, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed.
Oh, well, congratulations on all your success and your hard work. It's not like there wasn't hard work put behind all this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to that if we have a, a moment. What's this woman doing? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hard work, definitely. This didn't happen overnight. This is something that I've been working on since 1998. I worked as a waiter for seven years at the Four Seasons Hotel in the Windows Lounge. Uh, while I was trying to get my feet wet with stand-up comedy. I did comedy clubs. I would wait outside in the lobby after everybody would come out. I would shake their hands. I would uh, sell DVDs. I would take pictures. Just making, like, a human connection with mm -hmm. the people. And then, you know, people would come back with their neighbors. And then, then, then they would come back the next time with their family. And it became very communal. And people were, like, relating to the humor in a way where, um, you know, families, which I think are underserved in stand-up comedy, you know, stand-up comedy, a lot, of, a lot of it's like dirty or like you can't watch it with your grandmother because you'll cringe if she mm -hmm. hears what the comedian's talking about. So I kind of find a little niche that, you know, families could kind of come out to the show. I'm not saying I'm Mr. Clean. I mean, there's swearing and there's some of the material could be a, a, a little off color, but for the most part, you know, it's very digestible that family could come out and enjoy it together yeah well the new special is it me filmed here at the encore theater at win las vegas excited we're gonna be at your show tonight so oh, oh, I better maybe see you at the club later at excess uh, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding <laughs> i don't even know what i'm talking about <laughs> I'll it be, sounds like you don't know i mean oh, as yeah, soon yeah. as you said duck club oh, yeah, yeah. i went back to like what 50 cents uh <laughs> song right in the in the club that's a great song oh, and i will dance to it at some point <laughs> sebastian maniscalco thank you very much and we will see you soon thank you for having me on